snap peas are coming in. Um, these are the, oh, what are they called? They're a sugar snap for Baker Creek. I'll look it up and put it on the screen for you. Um, but they were a newer variety. I say they were sugar daddy or something. But anyway, <clears throat> the yields are immense compared to any other snap pea I've grown. I'm trying to keep the birds off of them. I got all this weird stuff on there, but um, I'll show you my basket. And this is half a pack of seeds planted right here because the birds ate the first half. Um, but instead of just getting a few to eat while you're out in the garden, I actually have enough to bring inside for lunches and stuff. That is a lot. That's just one day I picked yesterday. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with these peas. I'm not happy with how I planted them here. They're taking up a ton of room that I need and they just started to produce fruit. So I'll put them somewhere else next year i'll have to figure that out like i would rather this be full of broccoli right now but check out the broccoli too we're getting time look at that it's gonna be super warm this week so i'm gonna go ahead and harvest oh four or five of these which makes me sad but i can blanch and freeze them and this broccoli is so good. I wish that we had three times as much because we just love it so much. And then, it, you know, you can just freeze it. It's fine. So I'll have to figure something out for next year to plant more. But I just want to show you this broccoli. Um, this is a really good size of a head of broccoli to me, considering I forgot to fertilize it. It doesn't have any signs of a vitamin deficiency. It would have a hollow stem if it did. Um, the variety is premium crop. I got it from my nursery. It didn't start it from seed. But, um, so you harvest the initial head. Oh my goodness. Can you see the little offshoots down there? It'll produce, um, offshoots for a little bit after you cut the initial head off. So you get another harvest from it. And it's, you know, almost as big as the head of broccoli, but yeah. Um, Pleased. Please, this poor broccoli bed has been such a struggle this year because the birds, the birds have just discovered my garden and eaten everything. So we'll, uh, we'll let this go and then I'm gonna try um, doing purple sprouting broccoli, which apparently you plant in like July or August and then harvest in the spring. So we'll see how that goes. So the Dollar Tree bed is just going crazy, but I'm getting a lot of bugs. I'm gonna have to spray again. Um, and so far, still none of the squash has come up um, in this spot here. I'm going to, I went ahead and um, I took all the seeds out of the packet and dumped them in there. And I did find the other seeds I had planted. They just, I'm afraid the packet might've been dead. But <laughs> let me tell you, I, this is all the lettuce. I just come in and get a couple handfuls every day. Made one planting mistake by planting them all this way. This is like five foot bed. I can't reach the middle very well without hurting my back. I should have uh, planted them all along the edge. So it would be easier if I didn't have the bird net on and I could step inside, but I don't know. <clears throat> just make sure you can reach your harvest See, look at the uh, green beans. They're just getting all eaten up. So yeah, I'll give them a little spray. And there's the little tiny butternut squash coming up. Which I'm sure will be massive pretty soon. Potatoes are looking amazing. They love this double bed. And look, we're getting ready to flower. It's a potato flower. So after they're done flowering, you can come through and start digging out little small new potatoes if you wanted. I'm just gonna leave them this year. Potatoes are the easiest thing in the world to grow. You, they just like that fluffy, rich soil. 
and so you plant out the seed potatoes and then you know you keep it watered like you would any plant um, if I should come through and mound up underneath but the foliage is so dense this year I don't know if I need to um, the reason you want to cover the soil again is because the potatoes at the top of the soil will get that green poisonous part um, so we don't want that but anyway then you're like oh well, when do I pick my potatoes well they tell you <laughs> the plants just die they literally just keel over and die and then I leave them for a couple weeks and then they dig up potatoes could not be any easier So at this time of the year, I'll come through and kind of plant where there's empty spaces. So for instance, here I filled in and here planted a couple more of the bush beans because for whatever reason, those seeds either got eaten or didn't germinate. Um, and then the, like this bed, I just felt it was a waste, not a waste of space, but I felt like I had more space that was usable and we'll see how this works out but in areas like here where there's a good 18 inches in between the plants I planted a few of the pelleted carrot seeds so we'll see if those come up and then I got this tip from Epic Homesteading to plant the alyssum in between the um, tomato plants and not only is it adorable it uh, supposedly attracts beneficial insects. It attracts hoverflies <clears throat> that will feed on the caterpillars that get on tomatoes, the big hornworm ones. So we have plenty of hoverflies here in Utah, so I figured I would give it a shot. Oh, this finally looks good. Look at this guy. Yay, this is a pineapple. This one, and then these down here aren't as, as big. But, and then I came through and like here, I decided I had some more room. So I planted two basil plants. A, this one's a cinnamon basil and this is a regular Italian basil. But yeah, I don't like doing all this work and then having empty space that could be used. So I go ahead and cram things in, but good as I can. These are doing okay. These are my Paul Robesons. I love these guys absolutely a fantastic tomato from Baker Creek uh, definitely give this guy a try it has such an interesting flavor it's um purplish red tomato pretty big really good really good for um, a slicer tomato and it just oh, it has such a good flavor a really deep like tomatoey flavor and almost smoky or salty I don't you got to try it and tell me what you think and then these beauties are the, I'm going to say it wrong, sorry, Costu, Costulo Fiorentino. These are the huge um, Italian tomatoes with all the uh, striations. Am I saying that right? No, that's not what they're called. No, it is. They're deeply stacked, striated. Anyway, they're absolutely beautiful. They're doing okay. They're gonna live. They got blossoms on there. Um, I've been trying to trim them up from underneath. You don't want anything touching the soil. So any branches that are growing straight down, like I'm gonna cut this guy off. I don't know if I can do it right now without being really careful. But yeah, we're gonna have a nice, super warm, um, week it's going to be in the 90s and almost the 60s at night and i think the garden is going to completely change look at these awesome little dudes Yippee. nope this is a a thai pepper though it's a type of a thai pepper but some of these guys have little blossoms on them too there's a little ant overall peppers are doing terrible this year though they're just so sad it should be so much bigger, but that's the way it goes. Not bad for a random Tuesday. Tons of broccoli, tons of snap peas. I already have a whole giant thing of lettuce in the fridge, but I figured I'd keep picking so it doesn't bolt. 
and a bunch of eggs. So, I know I showed you this before, but something straight up is eaten. The melon. This one might live. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and replace them since I got enough time. So, I went and I grabbed, what do we got here? The honeydew, this one's a watermelon, gypsy watermelon, some nice big plants, got flowers on it already, and um, I have I've never even heard of this tomato, and it was buy three, get one free, so I went ahead and did that. And I also grabbed a pepper, because my peppers are doing so terrible. Look at that, it already has pepper on it. It's kind of funny. And then one slicing cucumber, just because I have room. So... Hopefully these peppers will be all right. I'm gonna go ahead and spray them with the, um, it's spray, it's organic spray. I wanna say it's the BT spray, but I think it's actually something else. But anyway, it's been working pretty good because something's been eaten like the, um, all of the melon and all of the beans and the dahlias. So I don't know what those plants have in common, but I've been running out and spraying them. What a year. So it is crazy hot. I know I said it would get warm. What I meant by that was it's gonna be close to 100. It is so hot. Like I've been keeping the veggies watered at night um, and the soil's still moist, but woo, it is hot. I kind of shaded some of my broccoli a little bit. See if that helped? But I don't know. I had to pick like five more smallish heads um, because I could see them thinking about bolting. So get like, instead of just being solid green, they have a little bit of the yellowish flower coming, but they still tasted great, so. But yeah, I'm keeping the chickens cool, the goaties, they're in the deep shade, so they're doing pretty good. And I'm making sure their water is completely full all the time. But it's going to be this warm for like five or six more days. So, um, not really, I'm not like complaining. It's kind of shocking that it's this hot so soon. It's the first week of June. But honestly, the vegetables love the hot weather. As long as they have enough water. Like the zucchini is just exploding. And the green beans look really good. So, it should be a really interesting week to see what goes on. But... Anyway, I just want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. And remember, life's a garden. Dig it.